Hi, my name's Alan Smith and this webcast is the first in a series of webcasts looking at the Python programming language from a perspective of C-sharp developers. So the first question you may be asking as a .NET or a C-sharp developer is why should we bother learning Python? I started out in the early days of .NET and we had basically two languages to choose from. We had C-sharp and we had VB.NET. I started out learning at VB.NET, but I think after the first two or three days, uh, I switched to C Sharp, as most other uh, .NET developers uh, seem to do. So after a few years, basically as Monty Python would say, VB.NET sank into the swamp. Not many uh, projects are uh, going in VB.NET, though it was used in the insurance industry uh, for quite a few years. I don't know if that's still the case. So I work a lot with Microsoft Azure, uh, and if you're a C-sharp developer, it's really great working with Microsoft Azure because all of the SDKs for the various services like Cosmos DB, Table Storage, Service Bus, when you're working with SQL Database, there's lots of libraries to work against SQL, Azure Functions, Web Apps, Web Jobs, and the Azure Batch service all basically have uh, these C-sharp APIs. Now, Microsoft does support APIs for other programming languages. Um, so you do have the uh, Python API available, but, but why would you switch to Python uh, for being able to build projects in Microsoft Azure when C Sharp has such great support? And you're probably very familiar uh, with working with C Sharp in other projects. So Python has really become the language of choice in the machine learning community. So if you're working with PyTorch or TensorFlow or Keras, these are the most popular machine learning frameworks to use, along with things like uh, Skykit-Learn and uh, Computer Vision, the CV2 libraries, which are all very, very well supported in Python. However, if you're a .NET programmer, if you work in c -sharp, we do have something called ML.NET. So combining uh, your c -sharp skills with ML.NET basically means you can create machine learning applications. However, the popularity of these machine learning frameworks is largely decided by the community. And in my opinion, uh, the community is shouting TensorFlow and Keras and PyTorch very, very loudly. And there's not that much community support for ML.NET. So by all means, if you don't want to learn a new programming language, you can explore ML.NET with C Sharp. However, support from the community and being able to use the latest and greatest frameworks may be limited. So one area where Python does dominate in Microsoft Azure is Azure Machine Learning. So I've been using Azure Machine Learning uh, for quite a while. I've been working with creating experiments and uh, within this portal, within Microsoft Azure, we've got the option for managing data sets in the Microsoft Azure storage services. We can work with compute instances and go in and create compute clusters that are basically uh, provisioned on demand when we want to use them. We've got the option for running and managing jobs and being able to see the statistics for jobs. We can manage all the models that we've been training. And we can also publish these models to endpoints so they can be consumed by other services. So if you look in the Azure Machine Learning documentation, down in the reference section. We see that the SDKs are developed in Python. We've got a version one and we've got a version two. So pretty much if you are gonna be working with Azure Machine Learning, if you're not gonna be um, working with things like AutoML or the ML Designer, you're going to need to understand how to code in Python. And within Azure Machine Learning, you've also got the option of using PyTorch, TensorFlow and Keras and all of these popular machine learning libraries. So if you do have some uh, Python skills and you've worked with these frameworks, you can bring that into Azure ML and be able to work as an ind individual or as a team working with the Azure machine learning. So if you're a C-sharp developer, how do you go about learning Python? You're going to need to work with a development environment. So if you really like working with Visual Studio, Visual Studio provides good support for Python. If you've switched to using Visual Studio code and you prefer using that, then uh, you've also got great Python support there. We've also got the option of working with Jupyter Notebooks, which is um, a slightly different style of programming from a traditional uh, development environment where we can basically mix the code also with, uh, with documentation. So it kind of reads like a document with, uh, with code sections in it. And you've also got PyCharm developed by JetBrains, which is another uh, environment that you can use. The good news is that all of these are free. 
you don't need to pay to be able to use these. All the development tools have a free community edition that you can download. And with Jupyter Notebooks, you've got websites like Google Colab and Kaggle, where you can basically create and run these notebooks for free. So let's take a quick look at Hello World in these different environments. So starting out with Visual Studio, I've created a Python application. It's a console application. And I've got this Python script, Python application 1.py, that just prints out Hello from Visual Studio. And you can see that this code is executed in a console, and we can press a key to exit from that. Next up is Visual Studio Code. I don't use Visual Studio Code that much, which is why I haven't switched it onto the dark theme. But again, uh, I've opened the folder, and this has hello.py, which is my Python script, which says hello from Visual Studio Code. And I can run this. And you can see, instead of popping up a separate console application, we've got hello from Visual Studio Code coming out in this terminal window. Next up is Jupyter Notebooks. I've created a, a Jupyter Notebook in Google Colab, which is a free environment. I've got a Google account, so you can just um, search for Colab and create these, uh, these notebooks here. So you can see I've got Hello from Jupyter Notebook, and I can click on the play button to run this piece of code, and you can see it's saying Hello from Jupyter Notebook. So the thing about Jupyter Notebooks is we can also add text. So I can put in documentation and explanation about what I'm doing, I can then generate additional uh, code blocks and be able to code in Python here. So this is a great way of exploring code and labbing. And I very often use Jupyter Notebooks in my machine learning training courses. And then finally, from JetBrains, we've got PyCharm. So I've created a new Python project, and this has basically given me slightly more complex code where I've got my main method here, which is calling the print hi function, passing in the name of PyCharm. And this is uh, basically going to print out hello from PyCharm. So I think one thing that has actually survived from Visual Basic is the use of this play button to be able to debug stuff. And you can see, uh, like in Visual Studio Code, this is coming out in a terminal window here and saying hello from PyCharm. So in this series of webcasts, I'll probably be using all four of these de development environments. I'll do a separate webcast to talk about the more advanced features like managing Python environments, working with, uh, with projects, and referencing and downloading Python packages and so on, but I'll probably be using Visual Studio for the majority of uh, the coding. I understand that developers are notorious for having their own preferences and opinions, so if you're following through in these examples, feel free to use the environments that you're most familiar with.